How do we cope with chronic pain, chronic illness, chronic injury, and disability? I'm asking this as an open question. It's not something that I have an answer to, as I've been dealing with that for many years, and it's gotten in some ways much worse, and there hasn't really been any light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And so part of the way that I'm dealing with that is to talk about it now because one part of me wants to keep fighting and say, you know what, I'm not going to let this define me, I'm not going to let this limit me, and I'm going to eventually get better. And then there's another part of me that just wants to throw in the towel, just lie on the floor and give up, because it's too hard and too painful. I know that that sentiment is relatable to just about everyone. It's kind of all relative, you know, you might have wherever you're at in life, you might fi find that you're overwhelmed. You might find that you're kind of reaching your limit every single day as to what you can take mentally, emotionally, or physically, or spiritually, whatever. So I think that this is going to be relatable, even if you don't have like severe health issues. Um, but again, it's more of an ongoing open conversation that I'm trying to figure it out as I go. So what I found was that in the past, when I was getting sicker and sicker and more and more injured, um, but I still had the ability to really take care of myself. And I was able to live an independent lifestyle and I was able to work and more or less function, even though it was very dysfunctional. Um, but I could muddle through. In that situation, I found that spiritual practice was a real benefit because it helped me to calm my nervous system, to breathe, to connect with something greater than myself and all those other wonderful tricks and things that spirituality can give you. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to diminish what that is. Um, but for me, there came a certain point where the level of physical pain and disability kind of made it sort of impossible to even do any kind of spiritual practice. And at that point it became, okay, well, what, I mean, what's, what do I, how do I, how do I cope with this without any strategies, without any tools, without any skills or anything to hold on to? You know, there's no belief system that's going to help me. There's no God that's going to save me. There's no magical cure that's going to save me. None of those things. And what can we do other than continue to hope that something will change? when we feel like we've given every single ounce of every energy that we have and nothing has changed, what else can we really do? At that point, we have to give up. Um, and hopefully, if we're lucky, that doesn't necessarily mean the end of the road in terms of our life. You know, there, there are other ways that that can go besides actual death. Um, we hate to see people die at a young age, right? Even myself, I'm 39, and I feel like that's really young, you know? And so there's such a strong motivation to keep going. Um, so in that situation, though, how do, how do we... It's so frustrating when you're not able to take care of yourself. I don't know if any of you are in that situation where you're dependent. Um, there's a certain level of disability which, once that is reached, you're no longer able to actually fulfill and meet all of your own survival needs. And it can be a very disempowering feeling. I know that for myself, it's extremely disempowering. And I feel like not only am I not able to take care of myself, but I also feel a sense of pressure or isolation or rejection from the fabric of the social environment that I exist in because I'm no longer able to participate in that environment in the way that the other people in my environment are able to. And I don't know that I fully have accepted or surrendered to that fact. I think that I'm still fighting. And I think that maybe that's part of the problem. Um, just, I know that it would be a, a very little tweak of my situation for me to go from still being able to walk around and almost taking care of my basic living needs um, to being wheelchair bound. You know, I know that it's a very, very minor tweak to get from here to there. And the amount of effort that it takes me to stay put together 
um, is tremendous. And I don't know how sustainable that is, but I hope that there is some way of moving through this that's more graceful, uh, that is more fluid, that's more dynamic, that allows for more energy to flow in and out of the system. You know, um, I find myself feeling stuck in a system where there's not enough energy flowing in and out of the system. And just like if there's a part of your body that is stuck and there's not enough blood flow to that part or oxygen that's able to reach that part, it can't really heal. Similarly, I find my own, my body and, and the location where I live and the opportunities available to me in terms of work and social life are, feel very limiting and I'm not able to get that energy transfer that is needed to help move the system and change things around. Um, and I don't know how to change that. I don't know that a lot of people will try to go with the flow. A lot of people will try to surrender. A lot of people will try to just let, let life just take you away and see where you end up, right? Because path of least resistance. Um, that might work and it also might end you up dead. It might end you up in a gutter. It might end you up homeless. There's a lot of places you can end up um, that would seem less um, positive or less fortunate than where you are right now. Like for me, I, I feel like I still have a chance to be, um, to pull myself up and, and, and get moving for in a forward direction. However, uh, It's one thing if you've got a very specific problem, like maybe you're an alcoholic, um, maybe you have cancer, something that's fairly well known and fairly defined. There are systems in place, which they may not be perfect, but they know what you're dealing with and they know how to deal with that. Um, you know, a certain mental illness, there are facilities you can go to and just be taken care of. Maybe not in the best way, maybe not in a way that is actually conducive to your healing, but at least there is some basic framework for what's actually going on. Now, when it comes to more unusual illnesses and health issues that aren't so well understood by the medical community, um, that's where we find ourselves in a tricky territory. It's murky because for the most part, we have to actually act as our own physician. And that requires a lot of mental power, requires a lot of willpower. Um, it requires a lot of uh, calm and clarity to be able to look and find different options um, requires good communication skills to be able to connect with people and get you going in the right direction um, because you're not necessarily going to be able to show up at a hospital or a doctor's office and get the answers that you're looking for or get the help that you need and there may not be a particular group or maybe there is one but it's across the country somewhere or it's in another country and maybe there's only a few very specialized people who even know what that is so it gets pretty murky, it gets quite challenging. And um, so for me in the situation I'm in, I just find, well, I can't really travel or move very far. And I know that I'm only able to drive, say an hour in a day, right? So geographically limited. Um, and so I just kind of, I'm just sitting here. You know, I've been sitting here for a few years in a fairly crisis kind of situation, but it's under control right now. And I'm living in a very, calculated way so that I'm barely taking any risks because um, it's very easy for me to go way downhill on a physical disability level in like a day. I could be walking around one day and then I'm just on the floor the next day. And it's, it's, it's frightening how quickly things can devolve, even though I put so many years of effort into trying to hold it together. So... Oh, I don't know if this video is going the way that I wanted it to. I think partly there's a lot of activity going on around me and partly I uh, did not sleep well last night. So I'm not really able to feel calm and safe and secure enough to actually like explore this in a way that makes me feel uh, like like I'm really getting at something here. I feel like I've been kind of 
anxiously hovering around the surface of whatever I'm trying to talk about. So I think I'm going to take a break now and just we'll, we'll call this the end of the video. And maybe I'll try again next time. Maybe I'll post this and we'll see what happens anyway. All right. Bye.